Gratitude changes everything. Gratitude changes everything. And I'm reading from the book of Psalm number 92, verses 1 to 6. Psalm 92, verses 1 to 6. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Let us with vaccines together. One to go. A senseless man does not know. Nor does a fool understand this. Praise the Lord. You and I, we thank God for the senses he's given us. Because we know. We know that it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing the praises to the Most High. To declare his loving kindness in the morning. And his faithfulness every night. Gratitude changes everything. And I'm teaching this topic in two parts. We're going to look at the basis of gratitude. And we're going to look at the benefit of gratitude. The basis of gratitude and the benefit of gratitude. That book of Psalm 92 that we read gives us the basis of gratitude. And it starts by saying it is good to give thanks to the Lord. So what are we saying? There are things that come our way sometimes that want to challenge the rationale why you must give thanks. But that psalm says it is good. So gratitude is your expression of thankfulness and appreciation to God. Gratitude changes the lens through which you see things. Sometimes it may not look logical, it may not look rational to thank the Lord. But when you have a heart of gratitude, you see the same thing, you see it differently. For instance, somebody may have a job that is stressing them so much at this time. Instead of complaining on the stress the job gives, you can give thanks to God for having a job. The same thing, the same job. So gratitude changes the lens through which you see things. Somebody may feel really broke at this time. Or you feel hungry and there's no hope for food. Gratitude will not make you to complain of hunger. Gratitude helps you to thank God that you are a living soul. There's no hunger for the dead. You agree with me? That you are living is enough to thank God for. That you are hungry is an indication that you are healthy. Okay? So instead of complaining, oh, I don't have food to eat, you can thank God for the appetite to eat because we are seeing through the lens of gratitude. Oh, this child is not behaving well. It is not enough to complain of the bad behavior of the child. It is enough to thank God that he has given you a child. Gratitude changes the lens through which you see things, and the Lord will give you a heart of gratitude in the name of Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 18, teach us something very important. Verse 17, he said, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vine, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there is no earth in the store. Verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That is how to see things. There is no completely bad situation when your heart is filled with gratitude. And Psalm 92 verse 6 says to us that a senseless man does not know that. 
A senseless man does not understand that. A fool does not know it. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 92 verse 6. So that tells you and me that the basis of your gratitude is the confirmation that your mental health is right. Does it make sense to you? That's not me saying. That's what the scripture says. Psalm 92 verse 6 said a, 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 a senseless man does not know this nor does a fool understand it. I will not be a fool in Jesus' name. So that you are grateful to God confirms that your mental health is good. What is your mental health? It's a summation of your emotion, your psychology, and your social well-being, and how those components affect your perception and your behavior. So the scripture is saying to you that the right behavior all the time is to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to the Most High, to declare His loving kindness in the morning and His faithfulness in the evening. So, when you wake up in the morning, you are not permitted to jump into the shower, into your car, and show up in the office without having declared the loving kindness of God. That is a confirmation that your mental health is good. You are not permitted to rush back from work, rush to eat dinner and crash in bed without declaring the faithfulness of God in the evening as a confirmation that your mental health is good. I pray the Lord will give you a heart of gratitude in the name of Jesus. You know, as human beings, we take things for granted. You wake up, I mean, you sleep in the night, you wake up in the morning. Is it only me? Seven billion people are waking up. Oh, you have been living healthy all year round. You've not had reason to be admitted in ICU. You take it for granted. It's not only you. Why is that a big deal? It's a big deal. Because the day things happen in the other side, and that will not be you in Jesus' name, then people will now realize, but God, why me? The same question Instead of you waiting for it to be asked in a negative sense, you can turn it to a positive question. See it as a big deal that you go to bed and you wake up. Every day is a gift. Every breath is a gift. Sound health is a gift. You can't buy it in the retail store. It's not available online to be ordered. It is the gift of God. So when you realize this, consciously you give thanks to God. It doesn't matter if there's no food on the table. That is secondary. It does not matter if the bills are rising. That is secondary. It does not matter if you don't even have a job at the moment. That is secondary. As long as you have breath of God in you, it's a gift. And there is an hope for the one that lives. And that hope will come alive at some point. And the Lord will help you in the current state you are. It doesn't matter how terrible you think that state is. The Lord will help you to be grateful. In the name of Jesus. Look at David, Psalm number 8, verses 4 to 6. Ask that same similar question, why me? But in a positive way. Psalm 8, verse 4, he asks God, what is man that you are so mindful of him? What is son of man that you are so jealous of him that you have just made him a little lower than the angels? He saw it a big deal that God is taking care of mankind. So don't take the blessings and the grace of God for granted. Your gratitude is a function of your attitude. It is how you see the same thing that others are seeing and how you see it differently. That is what you know, show how grateful you are. So as an individual, me, myself, I am not grateful. So I am grateful to God, not because he has answered all my prayers. I am grateful to God, not because I have nothing to grumble about. But I am grateful to God because my mental state is good. Because I am not a fool, I am not senseless. Psalm 92 verse 6, he said, fools don't understand that. Senseless man can't see reason to thank God. So I'm grateful to God because I'm confirming to God that my brain is working. 
that I'm sensible, that I'm not a fool. If you are not a fool in the house today and you know that God is the reason for you being alive, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I pray the blessings of God will continue in your life. In the name of Jesus. So we've seen the basis of gratitude. So what are the benefits of gratitude? Three benefits and we'll close. Benefit number one is that gratitude produces joy. Gratitude produces joy. A, a grateful man will naturally be a joyful man. Not the other way around. People are waiting for, for, for the time when they will have joy before they show gratitude. It doesn't work that way. It is when you are grateful that you will see reason to be joyful. If you are in the church with me, complete that statement. It is when you are grateful that you can be joyful. Not when you are joyful that will make you grateful. No. You are first grateful and then you are joyful. The Lord will make you grateful. In the name of Jesus. And my scriptural reference for that statement, Psalm 28 verse 7. What does it say to us? Psalm 28 verse 7. It says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. Look at the flow. David first saw the reason to be grateful to God. Oh, God has been giving me strength to fight the battles I cannot undo by myself. To face um, a soul that I cannot challenge in battle. The Lord has been my strength. Oh, my soul trusts in him. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. That is the logic. So if you are waiting for joy to come, ask yourself, maybe you have not been grateful enough. Because there is something in your hand that God has done that should trigger joy if you are grateful for it. And the evident thing in anybody's life seated here today or connected with me online is that you are alive. You are alive. It is not because your doctor is an expert or because you have kept diligently to the prescription. It is because God has given you the gift of life. Not a sense of right. Not a claim of ownership. It is the prerogative of the almighty God. So when you are grateful to, uh, to God for that, when you are grateful to God for that, you are able to burst out in joy. Gratitude produces joy. And I pray your joy will be full in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you are joyful, the issue with high blood pressure disappears. High blood pressure is a reflection of your, I mean, the, the language is clear. High blood pressure. When the pressure is high, the blood responds. Amen. So, sometimes you don't need medication. It is just that you follow this, the scripture. Be joyful. The stress level goes down. And you are healthy. Positive emotions come around you. You look more attractive. Nobody likes to associate with gloomy people. You see some people before even talking to them, you can't get close. Because of how gloomy they look. Joy makes you look positive. It makes you to have quality sleep. And it's not because you've got all the answers to the question your soul is asking for. But because you choose to see from the lens of gratitude. Gratitude produces joy. And your joy will be full in Jesus' name. Gratitude also increases contentment. We are in a world where everybody, everybody wants to be everything. The same me wants to be prime minister. The same me wants to be um, industry captain. The same me wants to be seven billion. Ma you know, everybody wants to be everything. And so we are in constant chase of goals. And it is good. But as you are chasing the goal, celebrate the goodness of God where you are. 
That is the way to live contented. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. It's a great gain. So when you are grateful for where you are, then you can trust God to take you to where you want to go to. But people don't want to appreciate God for how far he has helped them. And they are, are expecting the same God to take them to where they want to go to. It is not fear on God. Imagine if God were like you and me. So it doesn't matter the position you are in life. It doesn't matter your current location, your current um, destination. You have not got to your hand as long as you are living. There's a brighter days ahead. Tell your neighbor, brighter days are ahead of me. If that person doesn't believe you, look, so, look at somebody else. Brighter days are ahead of me. So on the account of that, you cannot write yourself off on where you are. The future is bright. But before you get to that future, celebrate God's faithfulness where you are. Gratitude will help you to be contented where you are. Look at Paul. The same Paul wrote the book of Thessalonians. And the same Paul wrote the book of Philippians. And he wrote them at different points in his life. But he was in the same situation. You know, when he wrote those two letters. He was in prison. He was in distress. And in 1 Thessalonians verse 5, uh, chapter 5, verse um, 18, it tells all, it said, In everything, give thanks to God, for that is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So he was in prison, and he was challenging you and me, who are not in prison, to give thanks. How better can that be? When a prison, I mean, when a, when a guy in jail is, is, you know, encouraging you that he's free to rejoice. That, and that's deep. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, it says to God, it says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. It said, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, he says he would learn to be content. And that was why it's easy for him to write from jail to encourage those who were free to live a thankful life. So the conditions some people may be at this time may represent something close to a jail. Because, you, I mean, you are not able to express your full potential. You are not able to live to the fullness of life that you were used to. It doesn't matter. Be contented. And gratitude will help you to be contented. May God give you a heart of gratitude. In the mighty name of Jesus. The worst man on earth is not a man that is poor. Is a man that does not reason to thank God for anything. Is a man that has no heart of gratitude. The Bible calls those men fool and senseless. Psalm 92 verse 6. So gratitude produces joy. It increases your contentment. And it also creates room for bigger blessings. Gratitude increases your blessing. So what you have in your hand at this time, it looks more. But when you are grateful to God, it can multiply it. Jesus had in his hand five loaves and two fishes. He gave thanks to God. And God multiplied in his hands. He was able to, to feed 5,000 men. And he had 12 full baskets left over. Gratitude. Gratitude increases what seems to be little at this time. The job may not be the best that you want, but that's what God has given you. Be grateful. It is in your gratitude with it that God can promote you. We hear testimonies today. 
where you want to be may not be where you are, but if you are thanking God that God has moved you from where you used to be, you are in transit, then God can take you to where you want to go. And he will take you there in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, we read the story of Hannah, the mother of Samuel. In chapter 1 of 1 Samuel, she had no child. And she was in distress, asking God for help. God answered her prayer. And she showed gratitude by returning the same boy, the only gift that God gave him. She returned it back to God in service. What happened in chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 20 to 21? Let's hear the story. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord God give you descendant from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. So she loaned that boy back to God. And the man of God prayed for the family. In verse 21, the Bible says, And the Lord visited Anna, so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. So she gave God one as a sign of gratitude. God returned with five. Look at that ratio. But many of us, we have one, but we can't release the one. And we are, scared, we are, we are praying to God, give me more. And God is saying, but the one that you have, until you release it. There is nothing you give to God that God will not multiply in your hands. Nothing. Whether you give God a gift of time, God would multiply it in the way that will meet other need areas in your life. Whether you give God a gift of good health. You know you can give God a gift of good health. God keeps you healthy for a reason, so that you can serve him. But you have good health, and to serve God is a problem. People do that. Or God give you a job that frees up your time and God is expecting that you return that back to him. And you are not doing that and God is asking, but I gave you this for a reason. Or God blesses you with material resources, cash, plenty cash. And God is expecting that your gifting to his work will increase and it is still the same. And God is asking, so don't shut the door against yourself. When you are grateful to God in the blessings of today, you can expect that God will return it back to you minimum fivefold. We saw the case of Anna. Fivefold minimum. Whether a gift of time, good of, a gift of good health, gift of cash, whatever gift that you return back to God in service as a show of gratitude, God would give it back to you in multiple folds. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Pray to God. Ask God for a heart of gratitude. Lord, give me a heart of gratitude. You may have been grateful in the past, but maybe God is expecting you to show more gratitude. God, help me to be more grateful to you. Help me to be more grateful. Everything I have taken for granted, Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Help me to be more grateful. Help me to be more grateful. Let me be more grateful to you. Give me a heart of gratitude. Remember the Bible says that fools and senseless men, they don't understand that. Show God that your brain that he has given you is working by returning to God in gratitude. Lord, help me to be grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second prayer, examine yourself and I will do the same. Look out for one thing that God has done for you. And show gratitude to God on the basis of that. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. Lord, I thank you. Blessings that is working at this time. The blessings that Thank God for that thing. Thank God for, thank God for that thing. 
Remember the only reasonable response to the grace of God, to the mercies of God, to the provision of God. The only reasonable response is a response of gratitude. Thank God for that, for the gift that he has given you. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful gift that you have given us. We bless your name, oh Lord. We appreciate you. Be exalted in Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is the Liberty Assembly, raising a glorious generation.